It's hard to believe that it's already round six of my bank box battle series for nickels. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and that's right, we're already on round six. You'll recall Wells Fargo has been really taking control of winning four of the first five rounds. Chase snuck in a round and B of A has completely struggled. Only one Buffalo nickel in the first five boxes and two War nickels. That's it. So I thought we'd do it in order of worst to first. We'll kick it off with B of A, then we'll go to Chase, and we'll finish off with Wells Fargo in the order that they are, but reversed. Now I've already checked all the coins on the top. We definitely have circulated boxes, that's good. I'll tell you, I'm a little excited to get into this chase box second because the very first roll I checked in this corner, take a look at this. I don't know if you can see it very well. Maybe not, but that is a 1940 something war nickel. So we've got silver in the chase box to kick us off on the second round. But that's for later. Right now, we're going to kick it off with B of A and pray that they can show us something. And I'll tell you, judging by the top side, it doesn't look that great. But it is early. We haven't even opened a roll yet. We have no idea what they're going to do. Let's get the score sheet out of the way. My mat's in place. We're ready to hunt. We'll kick it off with this roll first. Roll number two. Got our first find of the hunt and of the box. A 1947 out of San Francisco. On the board early. Now let's get on the board often. Roll number six. Got our second 40s nickel of the box, and this one is a 1940 out of Philadelphia. Roll number 13. Gonna have our third 40s nickel, and we have a 1949. I think that's a Denver. So we'll have to check it for the D over S. It's got some damage to the west of the Denver Mint. I'll take a closer look at that, but that looks like it's just going to be some more damage. Either way, it's not the D over S, but I'll take a look at it. If anything is special about it, I'll bring you back in. Well, B of A is going to redeem itself early on. We're on roll 15, and I'll slide them down. And uh, that looks like a buffalo nickel to me, and it is. Oh, it's an oldie too, 1920. And I don't think there's a mint mark. Doesn't appear to be, but let's put it under the scope just to make sure. We don't want to miss something that might be a mint mark. It might just be damage. Might just be some damage there, but I'm going to take a closer look at that. And uh, let me just confirm that it is a 1920. Yeah, no doubt a 1920. Let me take a look at that mint mark area and see if that really is a mint mark or if that's just some damage. So I've taken a close look at it. It's just a little bit of damage right there. There's no mint mark as you can see clearly. It's not raised enough. Still, 1920 Philadelphia minted Buffalo nickel in the box. Yeah, there's 63 million of these minted, but we have a date and it doesn't look that bad. Good find. Now let's find some more. Roll 31 of the B of A box and we're gonna get our fourth 40s nickel. It's a 1941 from Philly, kind of beat up, but we'll take it. Got a couple of 09s and some 50s, but not a lot so far other than the Buffalo. Roll 33, another 1941 out of Philly once again. Next roll, 34, and an odd looking 1947. It had that war nickel look for a second, but it's just a 47 Philadelphia nickel. Roll 35 is going to get me a coin I have not seen for quite some time. Look at this. A nice Helvetica 1969. You got to love it. I haven't found one of these in quite some time in a box. So it's good to see a cool looking foreign. And I'm happy that I have it. Let's take a closer look at this coin. Man, beauty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. All right, let's find something else. Roll 46 is gonna give us another 1947. And this one's out of Denver. Just laid out roll 48 and I saw a different edge. 
And look at this. Canadian nickel. 1964. At least it's an older one. Second older foreign of the box. Well, box one of the three Bank Box Battle Series for nickels is done. It was B of A. It did what it usually does. It did give us at least one good find. 1920 Philadelphia minted Buffalo nickel. That's a good find. Couple of 09s. We got a Swiss 20 wrapping from 1969 and a Canadian nickel from 1964. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the 40s, as well as three, four, five, six from the 50s. No semi key dates, no key dates at all. No 30s nickels other than the pre 30s, which was the Buffalo. Not a bad hunt, probably better than it's been averaging, but not gonna probably win this round. Still, we gotta do the hunt to find out, and you know we're kicking off this chase box with a war nickel. Roll number one with the war nickel ender, 1945 San Francisco. Now, had it been the 45P, we would have checked it for a reverse doubling, and it would have been on Monticello, namely, but it's an S. Still, it's a silver nickel to kick us off, and that makes us happy. Roll number six of the Chase Bank box, and we've got a 1949 facing us. See if it has a mint mark. And I don't think it does. 49P, though, that's not exactly an easy date to get, but we'll take it either way, even if it's in bad shape. Roll number eight, towards the back of the roll, I think I see a 1941 here out of Philly, and I believe this one looks a little old. It is 1940 out of Denver. So two in that roll towards the end, and I believe that's going to be just about it. So we'll finish the hunt, and we'll get on to the next roll. Roll number 10. We've got ourselves another 40s nickel, and it is a 1940 out of Philadelphia. Roll number 12 just cracked it open, and that, my friend appears to be a war nickel if I can get it out no doubter Philadelphia 1943 P and you know what we'll have to check it for the double I which is not there and the 43 over 42 over date which I don't see as well but i will take a closer look wipe it down and see what i can see let's take a look so i've taken a closer look it's just the 1943 p war nickel but guess what that's two war nickels on the box 12 rolls in let's get more so i was getting ready to grab another roll and i noticed something weird about the box look at this light blue dark blue light blue dark blue light blue dark light dark light dark light really interesting it's like they're alternating rolls and um they are different i don't know if that means anything but just thought i'd show you that since i thought it was odd myself roll 23 got another 1949 nickel and it has an s so 49s that is a semi key date so we'll take that one all day less than 10 million minted Roll 29, got a 1941. I think that says San Francisco. It does. 41S. Roll 30 is going to give us a 1947. And it is out of San Fran. All right, 47S. Not a semi-key, but less than 25 million minted. So it didn't quite make the cut, but not bad. Roll 32. We got a 1942 here. Non-silver and no D. 42 D non-silver. You want to check for the D over horizontal D. Mint mark. But it's not here. Still, it's always good seeing a 1942 nickel in the box. Because it's right next to silver. Roll 35. Just pulled out a 1954 S. Wasn't the S over D. But we did find another coin in the roll, 1941, out of Philadelphia. Roll 44, found another 40s nickel, 1940, 
San Francisco again. So we finished that chase box of nickels, and you know what? It was good. I don't know if it beat B of A, but let's talk about the fines. Nine in the 50s, no semi-key or key dates. We got 10 in the 40s. We did find a 1949S, which is the semi-key date. We got two war nickels, a 45S and a 43P. On top of that, we did grab one 2009. Pretty good box. We've now hunted two. We've got two silvers and a buffalo. Still no 30s nickels, or at least from the Jefferson series. On top of that, we're still on the hunt for that V nickel. Hoping Wells Fargo can show us some silver, some buffaloes, or maybe it's got a V nickel in store for us. Who knows? Let's get my hands washed, get some new gloves on, and let's start this hunt. Roll number two of the Wells Fargo box. And while it may look normal to you, it's got an S on it. Looks like we've got a proof nickel, 1988 S. Not in the best shape, been around the block a little bit, but it is a proof no matter what, and we'll take it. First find of the box is a proof. Roll number four, and I wasn't gonna record it, but I figured I may as well. Found a 1955, and when I flipped it, it's a Philadelphia mint, which is a semi-key date, less than eight million minted but it's trashy. Still, I have to count it as a semi-key date coin found, even in this condition. So we did find a proof, a semi-key date, and a 58D. Roll number seven. We're gonna have our first 1939 nickel of the three boxes. Will it have a mint mark? It doesn't, but even if it doesn't, you still wanna check it for doubling on the word Monticello and on the word five cents. And it's pretty heavy doubling. You would notice it almost immediately. That appears just to be damage on both those E's, which is odd, but moving it around, I don't really see what I wanna see. But you gotta take a closer look at these because the damage does sometimes hide doubling. But you would have a lot of pronounced doubling on all three points of both E's. And I don't see it, but it is a little suspicious with some of this going on here. I'm gonna take a closer look with my loop, but my first instincts is it is not. Still, I'll take a look and I'll let you guys know, regardless, it's good seeing a 30s nickel, even if it's got rim damage on it. Roll 13, and I think I see two finds. First and foremost, we have a 1940 uh, out of San Francisco, and then a 1955, could it be a plane? It is not, it's 55D, but we do wanna check for the 1955D over S. And that's not going to be it. But we'll take it either way. Two finds in one roll. Let's find more. Roll 15. Another 40s nickel. 1940 Philly. Roll number 29. And we have a 1948 nickel with a Denver mint mark. Is that Denver? Yes. Roll 30 is going to give us a twinsie. It's another 48 but this one's out of Philly. Roll 31 just gave us a 1952 Philadelphia. Nothing special about it, but I bring in because we got a Canadian. 1983, first foreign of the box. Well, roll 32 is gonna give us a second one of these. We got another proof nickel. And it's a 77, 1977 S to go along with the 1988 S. Two proof nickels, one box. Crazy. Roll 37, another 40s nickel, a 1941 out of Philly. Roll number 40, Miss Silver by a year, 1946, Denver. Question is, either how many more finds we're gonna get in this box, or is this glove gonna hold on? 
So we finished hunting that box of Wells Fargo nickels. And you know what? For Wells Fargo, that might have been a light box. The glove barely held on. We ended up with one semi-key date, a 55P, in terrible shape. We got two proof nickels, which will add some points to the board, 77 and 88. Been nice to get a 66, a 55, a 44, you name it. Found a couple of decent looking nickels that I might check against my album. Found a shaved nickel. One foreign, which was a Canadian. A 39P, no DDR. And then we got two, three, four, six from the 40s. 10 from the 50s, actually 11 if you include the semi-key date. It's going to be tough to see who won this one. I don't know if Wells Fargo beat Chase, and I'm pretty sure Chase might have got B of A. So let me plug these into the stat sheet. We'll see who won. So I've got the scores for the nickel box battle score sheet entered in. This time, Chase won the round 42 points to Wells Fargo's 35-5. That being said, Wells Fargo has won four of the six. Chase has won two of the six. B of A still struggling to win their first box. They did score 31 and a half, which is better than they had in the last several boxes, but they didn't make up any ground. Overall, Wells Fargo continues to lead the bank box battle series after six rounds with 42.4 points per box, 38-3 for Chase, and 29-8 for Wells Fargo. So it's a tight run race between Wells Fargo and Chase. Maybe B of A can get a good box next round to make up some ground. Either way... We still have four rounds left to see who wins the second series of the Nickel Box Battle Series. Hopefully you enjoyed this round. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.